BBC News, hello, I'm Gareth Barlow. A Ukrainian deputy prime minister has told the BBC that only the United Nations can save the lives of tens of thousands of people stuck in the devastated city of Mariupol. Speaking through an interpreter, Rina Vereshchuk said it was the only organisation with the capacity and strength to prevent deaths. Because Russia is a member of the UN Security Council, they constantly veto uh, UN decisions. And um, UN right now just observes what is happening in Mariupol. Um, And um, if the world unites and demands that this evacuation happens, only then it can happen. The Deputy Prime Minister called on the UN Secretary-General to intervene immediately to secure the evacuation of 500 wounded people from the Avastal steelworks, where the remaining Ukrainian troops are holed up. Ukraine's Defence Ministry has condemned as imperialistic an apparent broadening of Russia's stated aims for its war. These include taking full control of southern Ukraine as far as Moldova, as well as the Donbass, according to a Russian general. Here's Paul Adams. I think given Russia's setback so far, that seems like a rather distant prospect. But Western officials do warn that if the assault on the Donbass goes well for Vladimir Putin, he might well start to think big again. For Ukraine, well, just repelling Russia's advances and stopping them taking more territory is the number one priority. But if they do manage to do that, and the West is hurling new and heavier weaponry into Ukraine, speeding that up, then Ukraine may sense an opportunity to roll back those Russian advances back to where we were on February the 24th. The French presidential election campaign has concluded and voters now have a day to reflect on the competing claims of the two remaining candidates, the incumbent Emmanuel Macron and his far-right challenger Marine Le Pen. Voting is on Sunday in an election which is being closely monitored across the European Union and beyond. The fugitive businessman Carlos Ghosn has told the BBC he's willing to stand trial on charges of financial wrongdoing, but prefer to do so in Lebanon, where he holds citizenship. The former boss of the Nissan car emperor said he wants to clear his name after France issued an international warrant for his arrest. I am interested, I'm motivated by finishing this ordeal in the most orderly way, but finish it one for all, not to try to solve the French problem and then end up with the Japanese problem or uh, solve the Japanese problem and end up with the French problem. Both problems are linked. They are based on the same file. Let's transmit them to Lebanon and let's have once for all a trial, an open trial, where I can see the file and I can defend myself. He was detained in Japan in 2018 but fled a year later. BBC News. A special tribunal in Colombia has found that nearly 6,000 people were killed or went missing in a campaign against a communist political party between 1984 and 2016. The Patriotic Union was historically linked to the FARC rebel group. The tribunal said the violence was carried out by state agents and paramilitaries. Lawyers for the former president of Ecuador, Rafael Correa, say Belgium has granted him political asylum. Earlier on Friday, Ecuador confirmed that an extradition request had been signed for Mr Correa's return to serve an eight-year sentence for accepting bribes. Laurie Callas reports. Rafael Correa is no stranger to extradition requests. Ecuador's then leader was responsible for granting the WikiLeaks founder, Julian Assange, asylum back in 2012. Now it's Mr Correa who has found himself at the mercy of Belgium, his wife's home country. He's lived there since leaving office and was convicted in absentia two years ago in relation to a $6,000 private payment he claims was a loan. Mr Correa's legal team say any suggestion of bribery is a front for political persecution and they'll feel that view has now been vindicated. Cuba's deputy foreign minister has claimed there is virtually no difference between the policies of the Biden and Trump administrations on US relations with his country. Carlos Fernandez de Casio was speaking after the first high-level bilateral discussions between the countries in four years. The talks were focused on restoring previous agreements involving flights for deported migrants and the easing of visa restrictions. And the Argentine Football Association has indicated it will appeal to the Court of Arbitration for Sport if FIFA decides that a World Cup qualifier between Brazil and Argentina should be replayed. A letter published in Argentine media on Friday appeared to show FIFA's opinion that Argentina broke Brazilian COVID regulations by allowing footballers that have played in the English Premier League to report for international duty. BBC News.